Welcome to this Orchid Chores Diary. Oh my goodness, busy, busy day today. Once again, as per usual in the orchid hobby. <laughs> but as you can hear in my voice, I'm looking forward to it and I am not complaining. And I appreciate that you're here joining me and I hope that to some degree it will be informative if not, maybe a little entertaining. The most time-consuming chore of all is the silicon soak for the orchids we're going to be doing today. I have 200 liters of RO water ready to go on the east side, plus several buckets in the kitchen for the flush. That is to follow. Also, Stan the man is going to be hung up to his location under the overhang on the east side patio. He gets blasted with morning sun there, which I am a little uncomfortable about, but the strong winds freak me out even more because of the danger of him getting blown over. Up until now, I have been moving him around the patio, <laughs> depending on where there was enough shade, as well as the least amount of wind. So I'm going to rid myself of that stress and he is going to get hung up and he will just have to deal with the first hot morning sun that we are getting and then he will be in permanent bright shade from there on in. I have got a head start however on the east side of the patio. I started this first thing this morning. I took the orchids out filling the space as much as possible scattering orchids around the patio while it still wasn't that hot and they have already been soaking in their silicon which I have at a rate of 100 parts per million and a pH of 6.7. I have two videos on my silicon application because that is an important supplement for inorganic growing which I will link in the description. But before we move to the east side, let me update you on the deep south, which has officially been opened since we put the angraecums out there. And there are some other orchids as well we haven't seen in a while, so we'll have a quick look at that. Oh, and by the way, just in case, an added detail, seeing as water is a precious commodity, I have a very XXXXL sized mask on the east side of the patio where I am collecting the runoff of all of the silicon that's coming out of the mass, which I will then pour into the pots that are dotted around the patio. I don't know if it does those plants any good, but I just don't like to waste water because the flushing in itself, if you want to use the term waste, I mean, it's great for the orchids, but wow, a lot of water just gets poured out and away. Okay, let's have a look at the angraecoids and let's get to flushing the orchids. <laughs> the table is set. Recently exposed to the great outdoors, the two and Greycoids. If you're interested, I will link that video in the description as well. But you can see that the bossery on the left here is doing okay. Not seeing any signs of issues there. But you can see how the Crestwood Tomorrow Star here on the right, it is in shock. <laughs> I would be too after the horrendous winter I have endured and then I am plonked out into the great outdoors. Forgive me for the chair right in front of it. I'm not moving it. I found a perfect location and I will show you why it is like that and I'm not moving it for the time being. But yeah, Crestwood Tomorrow Star is losing leaves. I can't pull this one off yet. And I, oh, there we go. That one was pretty easy. Now the question is why? Well, the lack of fertilizer during the winter can have this effect. These leaves aren't ready to come off yet. Because I have not been fertilizing this orchid to a degree that it would need as it is a continuous grower. But the conditions were not conducive with fertilizing because I couldn't provide the heat or the adequate amount of light for it to do what it would have preferred to do, which is continued growing. So I'm way behind in fertilizing this orchid because I did not know what temperatures I was up against. Seeing as the spring was so horrendous, it was pushing out constantly with cold temperatures. My fertilizing should have started in February, March in anticipation of bringing the orchids outside so that they are ready for what was about to hit them as in warm temperatures and then responding to those, it's grow time. I was a month behind that, and on top of that, these orchids were a month behind even coming outdoors. Hence, we are losing leaves at the base, and unfortunately one right in the middle, but luckily, the leaves are senescing from the outside in, so it is not a form of stem rot. You can see that on this one here a little bit more clearly, I hope. Outside in, 
not concerned. It's a secondary effect, unfortunately, of whatever this orchid had to deal with through the winter. It's okay. Nothing going on except it's going to defoliate a little bit, taking the energy from those leaves so that it can continue what it has to do now that it is really nice and warm and exactly in the climate it wants to be in. And yes, I'm pushing calcium magnesium into the reservoir daily. I'm spraying it daily with RO water and then every second or third day I'm adding fertilizer. Seeing as it is really drinking up quickly now, I have no issues with doubling up with how much water I put into the dish at the base of that orchid top. It's going to be fine, thankfully. Here is cousin it bursting with growth. Cousin It is transforming into Rod Stewart for a little bit. <laughs> He's got the pokey spiky hair coming out now. All the new growths before they turn into leaves and go a bit pendant, they will just be spiky and look a little bit like a punk rocker. So Cousin It is doing well. I still have some blooms at the base of him, but really not many. But the ones that were mostly in the shade, there are still some teeny tiny blooms left. But basically, he is now in full-on growth mode and drinking like a sailor. <laughs> right there in the corner is Fragmapedium Garen Weaver, getting a jug and a half of plain RO water every single day so that I don't encourage any ant colonies to get into that root ball like I did in 2021. Looking a little bit worse for wear, but hey, outdoor growing comes with its downsides. Here is Epidendrum Schweinfortianum, starting to really nicely grow out of the apex again. Lost a few leaves during the winter, but that is to be expected. And right at the base, I have two new growths coming. I was hoping for a little bit more of this orchid. She is supposed to grow like a bamboo weed, but oh well, maybe because she's a baby, she's taking her time. But it would be nice to see this orchid take off according to her reputation. Alrighty, it's time to go and flush the kiddos over there on the east side. Let's go. Oh boy, I almost forgot. Sorry. This is why there is a chair right in front of the Angraecums. <laughs> this is my fancy way of protecting them from getting scorched by the sun and from keeping my umbrella on this side of the patio as opposed to getting launched over to the other side of the patio which has happened in the past and well i don't want to be bothering my neighbors in order to retrieve my umbrella and secondly if that umbrella is launched over the hedge or anywhere else it could also come crashing down on the own gracoids breaking them and the third thing is if it doesn't stay in place then these angrecords in about 20-30 minutes would be hit with the full force of the Spanish sun. Not a good thing. Many reasons why I have that chair like that the way it is. I used to have this umbrella in the pot. There you can see it on the right. It just didn't work for me. It was dangerous to say the least. I always tried to wedge it in such a way into the corner of the hedge there. Oh, it was always scary on a windy day. Made me nervous. More things have freaked me out about that corner than just the wind. The repercussions of this umbrella flying away are, well, <laughs> it would cause a lot of problems. Let's just put it that way. So it looks a little bit messy and untidy, but trust me, it works. Every time the wind is pushing that umbrella against the hedge, it is trying to launch itself out, but the spokes of the chair are keeping that stand in. So I'm hoping that you can see what I was trying to achieve here. <laughs> like I said, high tech, what can I tell you? But it works. <laughs>
Let's get this started. Let's get this started. <laughs> My singing sucks, but I know what I'm trying to say here. Oh, the first proper decent flush. I cannot tell you. Right, and the first proper soak of silicon that they've had in 12 months. And I'm telling you, I can see that they are struggling because the winter was harsh. There was no fertilizer, very, very little water. And I'm seeing signs of orchids struggling. And well, if you are so inclined, while I flush, I will talk you through a few things. Try to back that up with images, but the biggest surprise is here, my Lelia purpurata has three buds. Fantastic. My Siamese doll kiwi has two buds. That's the first for me, two buds coming through and not blasting or being chomped by mealybugs. The Prostechia cuculata variety lancifolia spikes in every single new growth from 2021. Fantastic. Coilostylus ciliaris. Two spikes coming from the two growths of 2020. I also have a shadow in Lelia pacavia that we just recently did a deep clean on. And that pot has a little bit of a rotting whiff to it, which is not appreciated. Gorgeous new root system on my Fushu Glory Happy Holiday that also got a deep clean recently. No sign or anything returning of scale. That's great just the way it should be. Nothing happening with my mailman over here. Lelia Perinii has her new growth coming. A little bit late, but better late than never. Rinko Lelia Digbiana, still not doing much. No new growth anticipated on her at all. Probably by August. Dendrobium Sutkinoi has a spike coming that's awesome so happy to see that it's a rescued dendrobium from last year my lelia purpurata variety vacoisery has got a beautiful chubby sheath and the little potinara here that i got from fernanda nascimento orchids and succulents is growing fabulous new root system Durigan's new growth is beautiful. I've tried to sneak peek into the leaves. There's nothing. Not yet. Maybe she'll bless me with blooms. And my Velotina has a new growth. As does my bicolor. Catlia Dinar Blue Heaven's growth is a stonker. I love this so much. Pris Martocarpa here has finished a new growth throughout the winter. Yeah, the sheath feels as though it's chubbing up, but not quite 100% sure yet whether it's the dried sheath or if there's actually something in there. My little white bridal here, the little growth is a pick-me-up growth. It may bloom, it may not. I've been very conservative on the fertilizer front with that one. Just making sure that I catch them all, don't miss any. I still have more in the blooming alley that are still soaking, but heh, space is a little bit limited at the moment. I should be doing this in flip-flops. This is what I've been waiting for. Just like my orchids, this is what they've been waiting for. We're gonna flush Pacavia through several times just because of that smell in that pot. And all the orchids on the shelf, they have to be <laughs> flushed and then put back into their reservoir because there's roots coming out of the bottom of the pot.
There we go. I have to hold the pot now and just flush through. This is Catlianthes Agaric Wax African Beauty. And I'm going to show you what's going on with her. There was a smell in this pot as well. But I'm not concerned. And I'll tell you why. Let's let that drain for a moment. Okay, let's have a look at her as an update. Beautiful, gorgeous growth. That was from 2020. Bloom beautifully. Lots of sunburn from 2021 because of how late she bloomed in the season for me. She was in the blooming alley. The sun had already dropped and she got hit hard. So this growth also bloomed for me very beautifully, but you can see it's much smaller. That is because she was divided and well, of course, then the subsequent growth can be smaller. And now I have a growth that is three leaves. So she is a bifoliate. She grew a growth with one leaf and now here's a growth with three leaves. And this growth developed over the winter and you can see how pathetic it is very much smaller even compared to the growth from the division. This is a winter growth. She was not being fertilized. So that is why I'm not concerned about this orchid even though the pot had a sort of a rotting smell. It wouldn't surprise me that the roots during the winter collapsed because of the cold temperatures. Also me not watering a lot. They would prefer to have their water around them. That is why this setup is called self-watering. The media should never dry out. Being a bifoliate, this is one of the strops that she will pull. She will dump her roots if something is not quite to her liking. So I am not impressed. I am not concerned. When this growth starts its root system, I obviously want to repot the orchid because the pot has broken, not because she needs it. These roots right here, they are plump, they are viable, they are not in any way giving me a signal that they are not functioning. So lots of variables going on with African beauty here. But once again, despite the pungent rotting smell that I encountered when I took the mask off and flushed her through, I am not concerned. She's going to be fine. And in 2023, she'll be back to her normal self. Bar anything else happening during my next winter. Of course, I have to put that out as a disclaimer because I have no control over the weather and currently I have no control over any expenditures that are in excess of what is absolutely necessary, meaning heating, heat mats, etc. Anything to do with electricity, it's not being switched on, for the orchids that is. All right, I got a hustle. The sun is encroaching on the corner of that table. I don't want it to burn my duri gun over there, seeing as she got singed last year as well. And the, oh, by the way, is if you're seeing a yellowy tinge on your screen, please do not adjust your screen. I know it's a little bit late. I should have told you that before, <laughs> but please do not adjust your screen. It is the fact I have the sun umbrella up and it is a beige color. And for that reason, everything looks a little bit yellowish and kind of off color today. The only way I can work on this side of the patio on day like these when I soak and flush 80% of my collection is no wind and my umbrella has to be up otherwise I mean I don't mind the scorching sun but my orchids do okay so I'm gonna hustle I'm going to put them back in their masks and of course back on their shelves isn't this beautiful and then in case you are wondering as I'm trying to replenish all the RO water that I've used today and fill up all the containers again I am not putting anything in their mass at this point in time but of course once I have a bucket full I will be going around and either putting plain RO water into their masks or depending on active growth fertilizer in the required parts per million depending on what each orchid is doing what stage they are at but that's not happening today I also have some seriously nasty masks again. I've only just washed some, so crazy, crazy. Enough of the jibber jabber, I gotta get a move on and I will be back. Oh boy, I felt that. <laughs> My back is killing me, I can't tell you. Whew, that Epsom salt bath is going to do me really, really good tonight. <laughs> Very sore bones today. Speaking of Epsom salts, oh yes, we need to do a CalMag soak at some point. Anyway, <laughs> we've got the silicon soak out of the way. That was the most important thing. That's what needed to be done. It's been far too long. I just want to show you something. 
just just to close it off check this out I thought I was gonna get away with getting blooms cut my spikes off and uh, move on now I have to cultivate seed pods on my <laughs> fires tonkenvillier can you believe it ah oh, I don't think any other blooms have been pollinated doesn't look like it two seed pods it wasn't me I did not do this but I had something to do with this. <laughs> Dendrobium unicum and myself, we say goodbye. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourself a beautiful day. On one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.